All right, let's get stoked with Stokes theorem. So today, I would like to present you the dark side of Stokes theorem, where you use it to calculate a line integral instead of a surface integral. And in fact, today, we'll calculate the line integral of f dr, where f is this adorable vector field, x plus y squared, y plus z squared, z plus x squared, and where c is the curve of intersection of two surfaces. On the one hand, the hemisphere z equals square root of 5 minus x squared minus y squared, and the plane z equals 1. So what this surface is, you simply take a hemisphere and you cut it off by a plane, and we'll show later that in fact this is a circle, and this circle we'll call it c. Again, claro que si. And, and what we would like to do, we would like to calculate the line integral of f over this circle. And orientation matters here, so we orient it counterclockwise if you look at it from a bird's eye view. So if you look at it from above, it is counterclockwise. All right, and so what does Stokes theorem say? It simply says the following. It says that the line integral of f, so the stuff we want to calculate, is just the same thing as the surface integral of the curl of f. In other words, the integral of a function is the same as the double integral of a derivative. So it is like the fundamental theorem of calculus, but here what it says is simply the following. The line integral, so an easy integral of a complicated function, becomes a surface integral, so a complicated integral of an easy function. So in some sense, this is the yin-yang of math. Easy of hard becomes hard of easy, so it kind of balances out. Mm. And for this now, the first step is, of course, to calculate the curl of f. So the curl of f, I like to remind you, is just a gradient crossed with your vector field. And what it becomes is just a big determinant, ijk, of, again, partial over partial x, partial over partial y, partial over partial z, and you put your vector field, so which I like to remind you is just x plus y squared, y plus z squared, and then z plus x squared. So all we need to do is to calculate this determinant. So let me remind you how to do this. So you start with the first component and Bomberman this, and what you get is simply partial over partial y of that minus partial over partial z of this component. Let me write that down. So partial over partial y of z plus x squared minus partial over partial z y plus z squared. And then the second one, since I'm in red, remember uh, because you're doing determinants it becomes plus minus so the this minus thing here, and what this becomes is not this times this, but minus this times this. So minus partial over partial x, z plus x squared, and then minus minus becomes plus, so plus partial over partial z, x plus y squared. And last but not least, we have the very last component, this one here, which becomes partial over partial x of this, so partial over partial x of, sorry, of this, sorry, of y plus z squared minus partial over partial y of x plus y squared. Now, I know this looks complicated, but look, it simplifies so beautifully. This thing disappears because there is no y, this thing just becomes minus 2z. Now, this thing becomes minus 2x, and this disappears. 
Okay. You're the weakest link, goodbye. And then um, this disappears because there's no x. And lastly, you get minus 2y. So let me ask you this. Which is easier to integrate? x plus y squared, y plus z squared, z plus x squared, uh, or hmm, minus 2z minus 2x minus 2y. It's like this meme of this person that's like, uh, you know, sounds disgusting, but now this is more and more delicious, yeah. Um, all right. So all we need to do, again, instead of doing a line integral of this hard thing, you just need to do the surface integral of this easier thing. So win-lose situation. But now the next question is, what is the surface? What is S? And for this, let's figure out, first of all, what the curve is. All right, so again, let me remind you the curl of f was this easy vector field, and c from the very beginning was just a curve of intersection of those two surfaces. So as I said, our goal is ultimately to find s, but before we do that, let's first of all find the curve find c, but that's not very hard because all you need to do is intersect those two things. So that set this equal to this. So square root of 5 minus x squared minus y squared equals 1. And then we get 5 minus x squared minus y squared equals 1. And if you put this on the right hand side and this on the left, you ultimately get x squared plus y squared equals 4. So what this is, is that C is a circle, okay, it's the circle of radius 2, but just be a little bit careful, it's not the one in the xy plane, it's the circle in the plane z equals uh, 1. So again, just like our picture showed, C is a circle, but in the plane z equals 1. So is again just a circle of radius 2 in the plane z equals 1. Now here's the thing, the question is what is the surface? You might be tempted to just say s is just the upper hemisphere and then parameterize the upper hemisphere and then cry because you would have to do you know cross products etc etc but actually none of that thing because here's the beautiful thing about stokes theorem stokes theorem does not depend on what the surface is so if this is the curve c no matter which surface you pick if you want orient it upward or something, you still get the same result. So you could pick S to be this weird surface. You could pick S to be the hemisphere, or you could even pick S to just be the inside of that circle. It would all give you the same result. So why not just be lazy and pick the easiest version, which here is just this flat uh, surface. So again, just to reiterate, what is S? Well, because the result doesn't depend on which surface we have, let's just pick the easiest one, which is just the inside of this uh, circle. All right, so now that we figured out that it's the inside of the circle, the question is, how do you parameterize it? Well, here you have many different choices. You could use polar coordinates, or even lazier, just pick x, y. So if this is x, y, this surface is just parameterized by x, y, and 1. Because remember, this is in, everything is in the plane z equals 1. So kind of the shadow is x, y, but if you go up, you can just parameterize this with x, y, comma, 1. So parameterize s. So simply we just choose r of x, y 
to be x y comma one. And by the way, very soon I will write d. Well, d what it is is just a space where x and y lies in. And in this case, what it is, as we found, is just a disk of radius 2. In other words, the shadow under s. And so the question is then, well, now that we found a parametrization, how can we calculate the surface integral? Remember, it's just finding the outward pointing normal vector, which you can just get by calculating the derivatives of r and crossing them. So let's calculate rx. So you just take the x derivative of each component, so 1, 0, 0. You calculate ry, which is 0, 1, 0. And then you cross them. I know physicists are like, obviously it's k, but just in case you have a harder problem at some point, you calculate the uh, normal vector. So let's, I call it n hat, which is rx cross ry. And that becomes, again, i, j, k, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And we get, in the end, 0, 0, 1. But remember, you always need to check if the orientation makes sense. So here, if the curve is counterclockwise, you need to make sure that the normal vector faces up. And indeed, it faces up, because the last component is non-negative. I guess it's positive in this case. So this is the correct normal vector. And then the question is, how do you evaluate the surface integral? Well, you just take your curl, and you dot it with this normal vector, and you integrate the resulting thing. So last but not least, we arrived at our final step. All right, and now we've just arrived at our final step. So let's actually calculate the line integral. So remember, by Stokes' theorem, the line integral of f is the same thing as the surface integral of the curl of f dotted with ds. Now, I would like to remind you the curl was this easy vector field. That was just, <laughs> I keep forgetting, minus 2z minus 2x minus 2y. And um, we had this parametrization. So r x y equals x y 1. And the normal vector was just 0, 0, 1. So I would like to remind you how do you calculate the surface integral of a vector field. All you do, you take your vector field, but replace x, y, z with the parametrization. So here all you do, you replace z by 1. And you dot this with the normal vector 0, 0, 1. And you integrate the resulting thing. So what this becomes is then it's the double integral over this shadow region where x and y lie in of, again, curl of f. But here it becomes minus 2 times 1 minus 2x minus 2y. So again, that's just curl of f. Dotted with that normal vector, 0, 0, 1. And you integrate this with respect to x and y. So the nice thing is, in the end, this simplifies tremendously just to become the double integral over d of minus 2y. Uh, dx dy. And lastly, I would like to remind you what was d. It was just the disk centered at 0 in radius 2. So again, it was just a shadow under your curve. And for d, you can just parametrize this with uh, polar coordinates. So this becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2, of minus 2r sine of theta, and again, r dr d theta. And I know some of you already know the answer, but in case you don't, let's just split it up. 
So we get then the following thing. So this becomes on the one hand the integral from 0 to 2 of minus 2r squared dr and the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine of theta d theta. But the point is, without even calculating the first thing, an antiderivative here is minus cosine of theta from 0 to 2 pi. And then if you evaluate this, in the end, you get 0. So at the very end, you get the answer is 0, just like my previous Stokes video. So maybe not a satisfying answer, but I think the method is quite satisfying. And never in my life would I have thought that I would make a video on Stokes' theorem, because when I took multivariable calculus, I didn't know how to do any problems about Stokes' theorem. So this is very, very cool. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.